characters are a, a vital, important part in the cutscenes. They're not a fly on the wall. They represent the, the key element of the game. And uh, you may have even noticed the vocal track sung by Susan Calloway. Uh, that represents the theme of Final Fantasy XIV. You'll see that actually reoccurring over and over in the story to set you up for some uh, amazing turns of events. Uh, so that represents basically the end of our Final Fantasy XIV presentation. Thank you very much for coming to that. As I mentioned before, the game comes out September 30th, or you can pre-order also the Collector's Edition and play eight days earlier on September 22nd. Also remember that our open beta is now available, so please visit FinalFantasyXIV.com and try to register so you can get in and try any one of these storylines. They're all unique to each city-state, and there's a lot more where that came from. So again, thank you very much. We're going to now move on to the Deus Ex portion of our presentation. I'd like to introduce Mary Tomorrow, the lead writer, and the community manager, Kyle Stalick. Are you having a lot of fun? Enjoying the conference? Good, good, good. Well, as I was just introduced, I'm Mary DeMarl, the lead writer for Deus Ex Human Revolution, and I'm going to show you a little bit of it tonight. I don't know why they decided to send a writer who is traditionally an introvert to stand on a stage in front of all of you, but luckily they sent Kyle with me, so he's going to actually be demoing the game for us. So to tell you a little bit about Human Revolution, it's an action RPG, and it's based on the four pillars of gameplay that we like to call. We have combat, we have stealth, we have social interactions, and we have hacking. And these are available to you as a player to choose from throughout the game, to play the way you want, because the whole game is all about choice and consequences. Playing the way you want to play it, and seeing what comes as a result. We also take a multi-path, multi-solution approach to the gameplay. So what that means is that when you have an objective to get to, there are multiple paths that you can take based on how you want to play to get to it. And when you're facing a challenge, there are all different solutions that you can use using those combat, stealth, hacking, or social interactions. You play the way you want. And your choices not only affect the gameplay, but they change the story as well as you go. Story-wise, we're taking place in 2027, not too far from now. It's a time of great technological innovation, but it's also a time of chaos and conspiracy. You are playing Adam Jensen. He's a mechanically augmented or cybernetically enhanced private security specialist who is working for one of America's most innovative biotechnology companies. These are the companies that make the augmentations that you get to play with in the game. Uh, and they are changing the way that society is viewing what it means to be human. So there's a lot of this uh, conspiracy elements that are going on here. The demo we're going to show you tonight takes place about six hours into the game. Adam has been invested, his company has been attacked and he's been investigating who did it and why. And as he peels back the layers of that investigation, it's going to take him on a very global conspiracy that he's at the heart of. Um, and in this particular demo, let's go ahead and pull up the demo. In this particular part of the game, he's trying to find a hacker, and his quest has taken him to an area called Hengsha, which is an island off of Shanghai. It's a real island that exists, but we took the liberty of building a new city on it. Um, two little things. The demo has been broken into two parts to show you a lot of the gameplay availability. We're going to do the social in the beginning, and then later on we'll switch to more of the action. We're also playing with unlimited energy and unlimited uh, energy and ammo, but these are things you're going to have to manage during the game. Jensen, you might want to get ready. The jewel of the Yangtze approaches. 
son of a bitch. How do we fight back Rugen in that? Twice the scum and half the space. Hang on, we're going in. There's a nightclub in this sector called The Hive. If our hacker went to ground here, chances are the owner will know. You got a name? Tong Ti Hong. And Jensen? Rumor is he's tied to the triads. taste of a futuristic Hengsha Island. It's a two-tiered city with a city actually built on top of another city. to create a very live, living, breathing world. We have a lot of different NPCs in the environment going around, having their own conversations, living their own lives. But they do react to you, as you saw when we pulled the gun. You can go up to every NPC in the game and talk to them, provided they're not an enemy, because if they're an enemy, they'll just shoot you. But you can talk to them, and in doing so, you can find out information about the story, the world you're living in, these environments, maybe some of the main characters. You get to hear things. You can overhear conversations that give you hints and clues. And you can also get side quest possibilities from some of the NPCs. The Hive is a member's only club, Lao Wai. Without a membership card, I can't let you in. You telling me I gotta pay to get into this dive? We've got a reputation to keep. Can't let just anyone get in here. Just anyone with the money. No pay, no play. You want in or not? Here, take it. Thank you, sir. Here is your membership card. Welcome to the Hive. I'm sure you will enjoy our establishment. So Kyle decided he was just going to pay the fee. He must be flush with a lot of money, but he didn't have to do that. If he had wanted to, he could have attacked the bouncer and tried to get in forcefully. He could also have maybe gone out, looked around, maybe found a sewer or gone up on a roof. Maybe there's an entrance there. Maybe by listening or talking to some of the people in the street, he could find out about secret ways to get inside. So there's always more than one possibility. I'll be watching you, Lao Wai. Got a favorite poison? I'm looking for Tong. Everyone wants to talk to Tong. Check the VIP lounge upstairs. Good. I 
need to see your boss. Really? Well, I'm sorry, Guaido. Mr. Tong Zi Hong sees no one today. Well, obviously, having a little bug here. This is a uh, early build of the game. Oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> Well, basically, if you could hear the audio, <laughs> Jensen is attempting, you want to try to start it? Yeah, let's try, we're going to try a restart for the hive and just see if that will help us. It's the fun of making games, ladies and gentlemen. occasionally <laughs> as I said this is an early build of the game and uh, we're still working out all those kinks um, but while we uh, jump ahead to the second half I'll explain a bit about that conversation basically one of the gameplay elements is you actually go up to people and you can convince them to let you into your objectives so here in this instance we wanted to see the man Tong Si Hung the owner of the bar, but we had to actually try and convince this bartender to let us by reading. And it's more than just choosing the right answers, it's a psychological gameplay. You're trying to read the character and his reactions and expressions and convince him to do what you want. If you win, he lets you go straight to the objective. If you don't, then you end up having to find another path in. So we actually shut off your ability to get in and see someone through conversation if you play it the wrong way. Then you'll have to search around and you'll have to find uh, other routes. So now we're going to jump to the second half of the demo. And this is going to be a little more action oriented, if we can call it up. On screen. <laughs> like I said, introvert, introvert. <laughs> Malik, I'm going after the explosives. But once I have them, I'll need to know a good place to set them off. Roger that. I'll see if I can locate an area close to the ships that'll create maximum confusion and get back to you. So this one, as I said, we're going to be a little more action-oriented. Right now, we're going to start out by playing stealthy. Our objective is to get inside to this port and obtain some explosives that have been left there by Tong's people. Okay, right now we're using one of the augmentations that's available in the game. This is a strength augmentation. It allows us to lift very heavy objects and by doing so create new pathways through the game. If we didn't have that, we would have had to go through a different route, probably a much more combat-oriented route through the main gate. Would have alerted guards, etc., and gotten into a lot of fighting. We're saving the fighting for later, so we're going to stealth around. We're going to have to try and figure out how to disable this camera and maybe the guard as well inside so that we can continue to be stealthy. <sighs> 